Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Social Distance Learning brought to you by the Liberal Gun Club. Tonight, Scott, otherwise known as the Bench Doctor, is going to be showing us how to disable firearms. I believe he mentioned removing a firing pin from a 1911 when we were chatting before the streaming started as one example. Speaking of streaming, this is currently being streamed out of Zoom to Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, we can't stream to YouTube because YouTube doesn't like it when people are handling firearms on live streams. This will be put up on our YouTube channel later, though. Uh, so everyone knows, all participants but the moderators and presenter have their video shut off and are muted. If there are questions, please put them in the Discord Q&A channel or inside the Zoom chat. Uh, we have, we usually, I should say, we have uh, several people watching for questions, but tonight it's just me, and I'll try and get to everybody. Uh, the easiest way to get your questions answered, though, is to become a member and sign into Zoom directly so you can ask your questions live in chat. Uh, becoming a member is inexpensive. It's as little as $10 a year and brings other benefits with it. Also, after social distance learning, we have what we like to call pub chat over in Discord, otherwise known as the post SDL shenanigans. I've put the link in chat. There we go. Uh, so please feel free to join us there. And now on to Scott and disabling firearms. All right. Well, I, I thought uh, this may not be a, a really exciting topic for our usual uh, presentation or content, but I thought maybe it would be a good video to have uh, in our, uh, you know, online. So if, if the topic comes up and somebody needs to know, oh, gosh, how do I disable my Glock? Um, we'll have some material there for uh, people to have access to. And the reason, you know, people people, why would you ever disable a firearm? Well, uh, you know, let's say you have to leave it with somebody um, and you want to be 100% certain that nobody's going to be injured with your gun uh, or you are, you want to store it, but you don't have a safe. So you want to just make sure that if somebody got a hold of it, a kid or a guest, that they would not be able to injure themselves or others with it. Um, you know, there's a multitude of reasons why you'd want to do this. And um, this disabling in my world means that, just, you know, keep it from firing uh, a projectile. It doesn't mean permanently disabling the gun. You know, I, although the things that I'm going to talk about are things that you can easily get the gun back in service without requiring a gunsmith or, you know, a whole lot of technical knowledge. Um, because I, you know, I don't like altering guns in any way. And I, uh, really hate when I see the decommissioned ones in Europe, it brings a tear to my eye. So I've got some common firearms here. Uh, mostly as you see on the bench is, um, all handguns, but I have a 1022 and I have an AR 15 and an AK. And I thought I'd just kind of quickly show you how what I would do to them if I wanted it to, you know, let's say you want to hang it above the fireplace, but you don't want it to be um, fireable or that kind of thing. So anyway, uh, I'll start with the uh, Glocks because they're, they're super um, popular and, you know, super common. Uh, not so common are the revolvers. Uh, they're a little different animal. Then I have a 1911, as, as Kyle mentioned, I'm going to show you how easy it is to pop the firing pin out of one. And, uh, Put it, you know, then you could put it back together and it's going to look like it will fire, but it won't. You could put a cartridge in it and there's nothing to strike the primer with. Um, so let's get started. I, I'll start with the Glock. This is, as you can see, unloaded. Uh, it's a Glock 19 clone, just a P80. Uh, that has no, makes no difference on uh, this topic. They're, for all intents and purposes, identical. So, of course, the first thing you're going to do, verify that it's unloaded. Take the slide off, like so. And then from here, you can just take your barrel out. And like so. So what we're going to do at this point now is we're going to remove the striker, um, you know, which is the this piece right here on the, if you can see right there this piece that moves back and forth that's really your firing pin but yep, it's called a see. yeah it's called a striker so to remove that there's a little sleeve right here you can just barely see the uh, it's probably not going to show up right here below the striker there's a little black sleeve so i'm going to push down on that this way like that and then i'm going to slide this back plate off so i'm going to go ahead and do that and this works on all glocks they're all the same 
So I push that down. So Scott, just an FYI, the closer you get to the camera, the more blurry it gets. Yeah. Because you have it uh, focused on the desk itself or yeah. the table, whatever there. Yeah. So when holding that black sleeve down, I just slide this back plate off, keeping your thumb over it because there is a spring in here. And uh, so at this point now, I'm going to take that striker and just push and slide it out. So that's your striker assembly. You can see the spring. And then this is the tip that uh, hits the uh, primer on the cartridge. So if you take that out and just put this back together, the gun won't fire. Uh, you'll have to push down a little bit on this extractor spring, but you just kind of push down. Uh, like so. And now that gun won't fire. So that's that's a really simple, quick way. And, uh, you know, of course, don't lose this. Um, but I would guess that most people that are going to pick something up that, like this and fool around with it aren't going to know how to put a striker back in it. But I would throw this in a baggie and label it and put it somewhere separate from the gun. Um, so all Glocks that I know of use that same. I don't know about the little 22. I've never messed with one, but just about everything else works that way. So just take the striker out. Uh, this is a, a SIG P320. It's also a striker fired gun and it works fairly similarly. Um, so I'm gonna take my slide off and take my barrel out. That's all the same as on a clock. So now you'll notice that we have a striker in here. It's in a very similar position uh, as the Glock, but there's no little sleeve in there. So I just kind of push down on that and remove my rear plate. Ah, come on. Normally. Let's see here. Why is this one not wanting to play nice? It wouldn't be one of my videos if things went smoothly. There we go. All right, same deal though, slide the striker out. You can see it's very, very similar. Uh, just a quick note, when you put these back together, don't, don't lube them all up. These pieces are meant to run dry in both of these guns. You don't wanna get this all gummed up with carbon and oil. So that's how you remove the striker on a P320. And that gun is now disabled and will not fire. Uh, if you do lose these pieces, they're not terribly expensive to replace. Uh, they're, they're readily available, so uh, don't worry too much about it. I mean, I would try to keep them in a safe place, but, uh, you know, it's not the end of the world if you lose one. So let's keep those parts together. Um, now we're going to get on to the 1911, which is a hammer-fired gun. So it's a little bit different. You know, your hammer's back here, and it goes forward and strikes the uh, firing pin, which is right in here. Um, and this is fairly similar to the striker fired gun as to how you disable it. So you see that that uh, circle there, that shiny circle, you're gonna push down on that and you're gonna slide this little plate down until it keeps that pin down. So let me grab a punch. So I'm just gonna slide this, push that down, slide that forward. There. There. See, so now it's blocking, keeping that pin from popping back up into this slot. So you're going to want to keep your hand over this as you slide this uh, plate out of the way because there is a spring in there. So I'm just going to keep my thumb over it, slide this forward like so, slide it out of there. And there's your firing pin and your spring. You don't have to take the spring out. It's entirely up to you. Um, and then uh, some, you, you can also take this extractor out. It's right here. It's probably not really clear, but um, you can take the extractor out if you want to. No reason to, though. This this will effectively do exactly what you need it to do. The gun will not fire without this piece. Uh, it's also good information if you ever break one of these. It is a wear part, so... Anyway, um, that's how you would do it on a 1911, or that's how I would do it. There's a lot of ways that you could disable a gun. Um, I like to do it as un unintrusively as possible and 
completely reversible. Um, but a revolver is a little different animal because a lot of them have this firing pin here, which is a spur on the hammer. So, uh, and it's usually held in by a pin up here and it's really difficult to get those out and it's not a lot of fun to put them back in. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're a lot different uh, as, as far as disabling goes. So the, what I would do on one of these is uh, keeping in mind that these parts are all hand fitted to these revolvers, especially on these older Colts and Smith and Wessons these parts are all numbered to the gun and they've all been hand filed and fit by a, a, a gunsmith. So you don't want to lose these parts, lose track of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the cylinder. Uh, you know, you slide the cylinder out and you can't load Im ammo in the gun. Uh, it's fairly drastic, but it's quick and simple and uh, certainly achieves the goal. So on, a, on an old Colt, once again, it's empty. You can see on an old Colt or on a, even on a modern Colt, an old one has these two screws right here. Um, this screw holds this one down. Um, so we need to remove these two screws. On a more modern Colt, there'll just be one screw here. So let me grab a little screwdriver and show you how to slide this bad boy out of here. So I'm just gonna screw that. I would, I would probably label the bag or, you know, I would use a, a Ziploc bag and I would label the bag with what gun it came from and the serial number, just so I know it's getting back into the right gun, especially if you have multiples, you know, two or three Colt revolvers. Um, it, it would be, you'll know pretty quick when you go to put it back together and things don't line up, but save yourself a headache. So get this little screw out. I did a whole video series on this particular revolver. This is one I got that was the finish on it was horrible. Somebody looked like they had taken a, uh, a wire brush to it and um, it was, the finish was gone on it. So I took it all apart and re -blued it using a rust bluing process. And uh, I stopped before the, you know, it was that deep dark shade of blue or black that a rust bluing uh, usually entails. So this, this piece, you know, this is just a little retaining screw for that. Now you can slide your, your uh, cylinder out of the way and just slide it off the gun. Get it in where the situation where it goes there. So now that gun can't be fired. Um, you know, that, that's, that's quick and simple. And then I would, of course, put these screws back in because these are easy to lose. Uh, they are available, but, um, you know, you don't want to have to wait a week for somebody to ship them to you. So I would align these. And the alignment on them, you'll see, is fairly uh, intuitive, but I'll put that away off camera. So that's how you would do a, an old Colt or a modern Colt. It'll be the same, but just with a single screw. This is a, a little Smith & Wesson. Uh, as you can see, it's unloaded as well. Uh, it's a very similar um, idea. It's this little tiny screw right here performs the same function as it does on a Colt. So I'm gonna get a little tiny screwdriver and please uh, buy a good set of hollow ground screwdrivers uh, from Brownells or uh, Midway or someplace that sells hollow ground screwdrivers um, for taking stuff like this out because um, it'll do a, a much better job and it won't ruin the finish on the gun. You can see if you, you've got this wrong and you've got a super wide screw, you're going to gouge up the nickel finish on this thing. So I'm just going to take that little screw out. These little stainless screws are expensive, so keep an eye on it. I had to repair one for a customer's uh, Python recently, and it was $30 to replace their special little screw. So now I can slide that forward and my crane and cylinder come right out. So this one would be easy to match back to the gun because it's nickel finished. So anyway, that's, that's how I would do a Smith & Wesson revolver.
and they're all fairly similar. Um, put this one back in since it's so simple, no alignment to worry about. Uh, are there any questions about handguns up to this point? Yeah, uh, with regards to the 1911, uh, mm -hmm. what's the worst thing that can happen if you let that hammer go forward without the slide on when cleaning it or if you're disassembling it uh, in the case of taking out the firing pin? Uh, you mean, say, in this situation or with the with yeah. the slide on? No, no, in that uh, situation with the slide off. Um, the worst thing that could happen is you're going to beat the frame up a little bit. Um, you know, and then this isn't terribly thick metal right here. Um you know, you can see where it's going to strike the frame. Um, so that, that won't be good for it. And I, I would imagine you could probably get away with it once or twice, but eventually it's going to be a cumulative thing and that could potentially get damaged. I doubt the hammer would, that's pretty hard and pretty thick. Um, but and in, internally, I, I don't know. I mean, Kyle's more of a, a 1911 guy than I am. So maybe Kyle could answer that uh, differently or more effectively. Well, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you for getting my name right this time. Yeah, sorry, uh, Charlie. <laughs> uh, I've always uh, learned things from you know people that shot before me, and it was never something I questioned. Just you know, don't do it. Uh, I don't know if it's causing internal damage. Everything that Scott said makes perfect sense. Uh, I would just not do it as much as possible. I know the other part of that question, which I haven't gotten to yet, is, it is, is it okay to dry fire a 1911? Um, and in my experience, definitely. I mean, with, with or without snap caps, I think of it this way. If dry firing my 1911 breaks something, I'm glad it broke when I was dry firing because it kind of suck if it broke when I actually needed the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, dry firing, uh, you know, the thing is, Dry firing a 1911, you remember that spring in there, uh, that uh, the firing pin spring. And so what you're doing is smacking the back of the firing pin, and that spring is uh, being compressed and then decompresses. So that spring is going to eat up most of the force and uh, won't do any damage. Uh, there are some guns, mainly uh, rim fires, that you don't want to uh, uh, dry fire, but most center fire handguns anymore um, can be uh, dry fired. You know, most modern ones, there might be, you know, I don't generally, revolvers, antique revolvers can be a little bit of a different animal because uh, you can do what's called work harden the metal, you know, the, so, you know, the more you drop this, the harder it's going to get because it's just smacking into more metal and eventually it will get really hard and really brittle and break. Um, that's more common on, on older, uh, revolvers. So, you know, I'm, I would real always suggest that you dry fire a revolver with a snap gap in there and give this something to hit. Um, but you know, that's my two cents on the subject. All right. Well, so that's, those are some handguns, striker and hammer fired guns. Of course, there's many, many variations of those two themes. This isn't by any means an exhaustive, uh, uh, collection of uh, guns, but it gives you an example of a starting place or something to look at if you wanted to do this to say a Beretta 92 or some other gun that we haven't talked about, um, you know, it gives you an idea like how, you know, one of the things you could do is remove the firing pin, um, you know, there, or you could just take the slide off and separate the slide from the frame. Uh, but I like to do it in just the, you know, quick and dirty way and keep as many parts together as I can. Um, so without further ado, let's go on to some long guns and talk about those. And, um, the first one, of course, probably, you know, another one of these rifles that's super popular, uh, these days is the, uh, AR-15 series of, uh, sport, sporting rifles. See, it's empty, no magazine. And, uh, you know, these are, are, are pretty common. So it's always good to know how to, uh, disable something like this. So if you're not familiar with them, uh, I'll go through it real quick. Uh, there are be uh, more exhaustive videos on the subject uh, of disassembling one of these, but um, so I'm just gonna push these pins. These are the takedown pins, like so. This one's a little tight. Uh, this is one of my most heavily- You're not on the screen with the second pin, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I'm move reaching it. for yeah. a hammer because I can't okay. do a video without a hammer as is our charter. Uh, so we have a second, 
that out of my way. Second takedown pin right back here. You just tap that. So once those pins are out, we can now separate the bottom half from the top half of the gun. Take your lower portion, set it aside. Grab your charging handle, which is right here. Get a better view of this. It's, you know, your charging handle. You slide that back. Take out your bolt carrier group. Take your upper and set it aside. So, you know, you can take your bolt carrier group out. And now I'm just going to pop the firing pin out of a AR. So you just, but there's a look. Wouldn't this be the easy place to stop? Because the bolt carrier group, I mean, how many people carry around a bolt carrier group with them? Just pull it. Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't know if some people want to maybe display a gun or, you know, I just, I just always figured uh, just pull the, the, uh, you know, if you wanted to cycle the gun and, and use it for a demo or something, um, say you're going to teach a class in gun safety and you don't want this thing to fire regardless of what happens, you know, this is one way you could do that. And you could still cycle the gun and everything without uh, firing it, if that makes sense. So anyway, you have a little uh, powder key right here. Um, and this is what holds the firing pin in. So you would just get a little pick or something. Some people have fingernails that can do this, but you just pull that little pin out and you take your firing pin and just tap it on the desktop, there's your firing pin. So then you could put that cotter key back in, load it back in the gun and you could cycle it and dry fire it and you know, all kinds of things uh, without, uh, you know, and the gun would still look 100% functional. So um, anyway, that's, that's how I would do it on it. Yeah, I mean, as, as Kyle said, you know, if you just wanted to do quick and dirty, just pull this piece out the entire assembly and uh that certainly would disable the gun but this would be frustrating you slam a magazine in there and yank back on the charging handle and drop the bolt and nothing happens um anyway so that's that uh the ak-47 is another series of sporting rifles that are fairly common um and here i'm just going to do the kyle method of simply taking the bolt out of it um, for one of these, if you're not familiar with them, you have a dust cover back here, right above the, the pistol grip. You just push in on that, lift your dust cover off, take your spring and rod. Now you just slide your bolt back and you could just take this piece off and put the gun back together, or you can just slide this bolt out, uh, get it out of here. Anyway. You can just get the, you know, I'll just leave it in there. But you know, you could just take this piece and uh, hide it somewhere. So this is the bolt assembly and the piston, the gas piston. So it's a pretty simple one. Um, you know, there are other ways, you know, yeah, I could show you how to get the firing pin out of it uh, and things like that. But you know, it, what's the point if, if you're, you know, if, if you, need to know that give me a holler off screen and we can talk about uh ways to do that uh how to disassemble the bolt uh, i'm gonna have a pile of guns to put back together tonight next is going to be another really common gun that's present in a lot of households and is a ruger 1022 and this is a tc22 it's a clone of a ruger and it works exactly the same way not much difference to it i'm gonna raise the camera up a little bit and give myself a little bit more room okay so see it's just a oh and it's unloaded chamber's empty magazine was in it magazine's empty uh, mag's empty chamber's empty so on these, uh, we're gonna take out this screw right here and uh, let's see, let's play the guessing game of which Allen wrench is the right Allen wrench. Oh, and today we are a loser in that game. You'd think I'd know the number off the top of my head, but I don't. 
grab the one next to it. Yeah. On a Ruger 1022, if I'm not mistaken, these are a um, flathead screw. So I guess it's not that one. And let's go over to our inch series. Oh, should have had all this set up, but I had to work at my day job. Oh my goodness, really? Okay, no. So what size is this thing if it isn't any of those? That's nuts. Sorry about this, folks. This is par for the course for me, though. Ill-prepared, poorly equipped. But I make the mistakes so you don't have to. So you just unscrew that. And this should be captured. It is on a Ruger 1022. This screw won't come all the way out. Um, so... Uh, and you just want to kind of wiggle it out. Oh, you got to put your safety in kind of between safe and fire so that it slides out of the chassis. If, if it's pushed all the way one way or the other, especially on a 1022 with a regular stock on it, uh, it will chew up the sides of the receiver if you don't keep an eye on that safety. So you just want to be careful with it as you slide it out. So just get this out of here real quick. Okay. So undoing that screw, you just slide the whole assembly out. And uh, once again, this is if you wanted to keep it um, somewhat functional, but disable the gun and prevent it from firing. So now you have these two pins right here and you're gonna take your trigger pack out. And of course, you know, removing the trigger pack and put it back together would accomplish your goal. Uh, so you could stop right here if you wanted to, but if you wanted to use it for uh, demonstration purposes, let me get that little pin going. Normally these aren't too tough to get out. Okay, so you just pull these pins out, lift your trigger, trigger pack out. So normally, yeah, you could just take this and hide it, um, but what I would do if I wanted to use this for say a classroom presentation on gun safety, I would just take the bolt out um, and you just slide it into the right position. And let me find that right here. You gotta lift up. Yeah, but if you have a 20, 1022 and you've ever done a deep clean on it, you'll, uh, you'll know how to take this apart, so. It's gonna find where that sweet spot is. Boop, uh, any questions or is everybody asleep? Uh, or are if there if any- I could, If I could make appropriate uh, storing noises, I would at this point, but I can't do that on demand. Yeah, no, I understand. Like I said- no. the, the, the I don't whole think we point. have any questions that are related to uh, disabling a firearm at this moment, no. Okay, or, yeah, and if anybody has a specific firearm, uh, I'll see if I have one. I have a fairly decent collection, have quite a bit of stuff in there. Um, but anyway, well, why is the bolt not wanting to come out of this gun? Don't know. Anyway. Um, well, anyway, I'm not going to mess around with this one all afternoon, but it's really simple to take the firing pin out of this. It's just a little, little pin that you pop out, firing pin comes out. You can reassemble everything, put the pin back in and put the gun back together and it will act and do everything that a regular 1022 would do except fire. So the bolt comes out and uh, I, for whatever reason, this one's being stubborn. So I'm not going to do my usual thing of waste 30 minutes showing you how to do it. So let me set that aside. And uh, I have a question. Okay. Uh, are you willing to go over disabling an over under shotgun on stream? And if that's not something you can do tonight, perhaps uh, we can do it in discord at some point. Yeah, I don't have an over under shotgun, unfortunately. Um, but if you want to PM me the, the make and model, 
and uh, I will take a look at it and give you some ideas. The question was asked on Discord, so that's definitely uh, okay. someone that can reach out to you directly. Yeah, yeah, just reach out to me directly, and and I certainly look it up and research it for you. Um, shotguns, you know, there there are some some shotguns that are pretty easy um, for this sort of thing. I've got a Rem uh, Remington 870 right here. Um, and this one, interestingly enough, I just loaned to a movie production company and they wanted a real firearm, but they, did, they weren't going to fire it. So in light of recent events, uh, I decided I was going to give them, let them use a firearm that uh, could not fire regardless, you know, of who did what or somebody accidentally put live ammo in it, it wouldn't fire. So what I did with the, uh, to make it function properly, uh, I took it all apart and I machined a brass firing pin um, because of the way the bolt goes together, the firing pin has to be in it for it to function and cycle. So I made one out of brass, which is a very soft sacrificial metal and it's too short to ever strike a uh, primer. So that way the gun looked and felt and acted just like a normal gun, but it would not fire. So if that's something that you ever wanted to do, give me a holler and I can make you one of these pretty quickly. It's a simple, you know, five minutes on the lathe. So I'm going to go ahead and break the shotgun down. Unscrew my magazine tube cap. There is a question about the 1022 when we're done with the shotgun. Oh, sure. Uh, so I'm going to slide my barrel off. Put the barrel aside. I love these 870s. Uh, so from here, uh, if you want to get into disassembling a, an 870, we'll talk about it at another time because it's its its own, you know, animal. But uh, it, it's fairly, fairly simple as I struggle. But what I'm going to do is take the bolt out of it and just, and that will make it 100% unfireable. Where's that? I can't see what I'm doing here. There we go. There's that one. Put the one on this side. These two little tabs in here that you gotta push and pull to get the action bars out of the way. Yeah, come on. But uh, shotguns are you know, a little bit different because the firing pins on them aren't always that easy to get to. Um, but get this one apart. It's always a weird angle that I have to do this from and it always screws me up. Ba -ba. And, uh, you know, I was thinking with a bolt action rifle, um, you know, like an old Mauser, uh, you know, just take the bolt out, hide the bolt. Uh, on a Mauser, I did a little short video on disassembling a Mauser uh, bolt. Uh, so you could, there is a video out there to show you how to take apart a Mauser bolt and just hide the firing pin if you wanted to do that. Uh, I did it more for cleaning purposes or replacement. Come on, why don't you want to come out today? Just anyway. Well, all right, this is not, I just had this gun apart and cleaned it after its movie debut. Uh, so now I'm an armorer to the stars. Anyway, there's two little buttons I have to push in and slide the action bar out. And the bolt is just a little chunk right here that rides right on top. You just take that out and then you could reassemble the gun. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, another way you could do it is pop these two pins out right here. And the trigger assembly will uh, just come right out. And that is another way that you would not be able to fire this gun like that. You just take that out um, and that gun won't fire. So there's our bolt down in there. You just take this piece out and it won't work. So that's a couple of ways you could handle a 1022. But like I said, shotguns are a little different animal uh because the firing pins aren't as readily accessible as uh you know a lot of other guns 
So let me go ahead and just get this in a state where I can set it aside and see what Well, the else. question for the 1022 was uh, in order to get the bolt out, you actually have to pull the charging handle out of the bolt, right? The actual- Yeah, you have to get the- there. Yeah, the charging handle is a handle and a rod and a spring all in one. And you have to slide it into a place where you could slide it. You have to remove that piece and then the bolt just pops right out. Um, I'll grab that again in here in a second. Let me uh, set this aside. I don't want to get all these pins mixed up. Uh, play a shuffle game of getting it all back together. Uh, any other guns off the top of anybody's head that uh, I may be able to help with? Where's the, there it is. And a pile of disassembled guns here. Yeah, so the, this is your uh, charging handle right here. And there's a notch in the bowl where this fits in. And the charging handle is connected to this long rod down in here. And as you pull the bolt back, it compresses this spring. So, yeah. But yeah, this charging handle has to come out. And I'm trying to remember where the, you gotta lift the, the bolt's gotta come up. And it's been a while. I think I did a whole video on this gun. It's been a while. Hey, hey, hey. So, well, yeah. if it's not something that you can get to this evening, just the fact that yeah, I'll set it aside. To. Yeah, we, there's plenty of footage of me struggling with things. Uh, if you want to see that, any other particular type of gun, I figured the striker fired and hammer fired handguns, uh, AR and AK 47 would probably be the most useful in 1911 because those are the most common. Um, but I have you know several other guns and different types of guns and a lot of old guns if if there's anything in particular somebody's interested in hearing about so uh, i haven't seen anything else so far all right i must have bored them into submission um all right well that's just a few quick things that you could do uh you know you obviously could hide a magazine but you could still single load a gun. So I would not use that as my go-to for disabling a gun. Another thing you could do if there were no other options uh, on an old, you know, not uh, old firearm that there's just no information on is you could zero safe the barrel. You know, when they decommission guns in Europe, what they do is they weld up the barrel so nothing will fit in there. Um, so what you could do is stuff a patch. And I have a video on casting a chamber. So it's it would be the same process. You would stuff a oily patch down into the barrel of the gun just so far and heat up some bismuth with there's a the trade name is Serosafe and just pour it in there and make sure you fill it all the way to the top because you don't want anybody to inadvertently shove a round in there and uh, not know that that zero safe's there because it will blow up the gun and it's a safety issue. But I would just fill it up to right there, let it cool. And then later on, you can take a uh, brass rod and pound that out um, and uh, the gun will return back to normal function, but it will not allow anything to be put in the chamber of the gun and it will look perfectly fine until you look down that chamber. But if you tried to load around in there, it wouldn't go. So that's something that you could possibly do. And zero safe isn't expensive and it, it has a really low melting point. So uh, it's not, not really difficult. You can melt, melt it with just a propane torch or uh, I use a little cooking uh, chef's torch to melt that stuff. So zero safe is, is certainly a, an option to you if you don't have any other. So, and they sell it by the pound. I can't remember how much it is, like 14 bucks a pound, but that's enough to do several guns. So anyway, anything else? Uh, nothing uh, that's still in this realm here. So I think we're good to uh, call it a night. Okay. Well, I'm I'm sorry it wasn't more dynamic and exciting. Next time. Oh. Actually, okay. I'm sorry. There is, there is another question. So uh, Danny decided to be a smart aleck and ask how we would disable an Uzi uh, because of my history with one, but there's actually interest in seeing it. Uh, so do you know how to disable an Uzi to keep it from firing other than selling it because it's kind of garbage? Uh, how would you disable an Uzi? You probably have to pull the bolt out of it, but the only thing I could think of, 
I only if, broke mine down once and I would concur. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, yeah, I can't think of anything else that, that would be as quick and dirty as that. So no, that, that would make the most sense. Yeah. Um, and I mean, and that's, you know, that's a standard answer for most guns. If it has a bolt that you can get to easily, you know, you don't want to do it on a gun that, you know, a lot of older guns can be a real pain to get back together or take apart. So, you know, go into it cautiously. Uh, if you don't know how to disassemble the gun, then, you know, reach out to me and I'll see if I can help you, uh, you know, figure out a way to disable it. Um, but uh, yeah, some older guns can be a real chore. So anyway.